Divorce isn't a rare phenomenon. Unfortunately, it's common. So common that it's almost the norm. When things are going well in your marriage, you need to keep that fire burning. I'm gonna share with you the top three ways to keep the love flame alive so that you can stay happily married for life. Hi, I'm Kelly Case, licensed counselor and marriage coach. I take marriages that are broken and unfulfilling and make them first class. This channel is for people who want to have a happier home, but don't know how to get it. Be sure to click the subscribe button so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content. Once I get couples to the point where their flame is burning, I want to help them keep it going. Thankfully, my job is to teach you to start a fire in your relationship, not in a fire pit, because I would be a lousy teacher if that were the case. In fact, despite my attempts, I have never been able to start a real fire from scratch. If you've ever tried, you know that it's much easier to keep an existing fire going than it is to build a new fire. So let's keep this flame alive while we have it so you don't have to start over. Just as with a real fire, if you neglect it, it'll burn out eventually. The flame of your marriage needs to be constantly tended. You may need to add more logs or rearrange the logs. You might need to stoke it or give it a little bit of room to breathe. Your marriage needs regular attention so that you can continue to feed the flame of connection. Let me share with you the top three ways to do this. The first and most important way to keep the fire burning is to prioritize your relationship. I know, this sounds basic, and it is. So why do so many couples struggle with it? Keep that image of a burning fire always in your mind. Never ever forget about the fire and let it burn out. Your marriage relationship should be the second most important thing in your life after your relationship with God. It should be more important than money, success, fame, friends, parents, and even more important than your children to some extent. You want to keep that fire burning as if your life depends on it. Even when rain comes, and it will, and you have to find a way to keep that fire from dying, keep working at it. Make your spouse a priority. Always be looking for ways that you can know them better and make them smile more. For example, if your spouse needs you to be willing to sacrifice something less important to be there for them, do it. When your spouse is hurting, drop what you're doing to support them. Limit technology use and make sure to have enough quality time together, not staring at your phone or laptop. Go on a date night or a weekend getaway. I recommend a date night at least once per month and a weekend getaway at least once per year. These moments alone are like adding big logs to the fire that keep it going for quite a while into the future. The point is to never neglect it. Always be giving it something to keep it from dying out. If you neglect the fire, it'll burn itself out. Another important way to keep the fire burning is to love your spouse the way they need to be loved. You've heard the golden rule, right? Treat people the way you want to be treated. I like that rule, but I want to put a spin on it for the purposes of our discussion today. I don't want you to treat your spouse the way you want to be treated. Instead, I want you to treat your spouse the way they need to be treated. Love them the way they want to be loved. It'll come as no surprise to you when I say that your spouse is very different from you. There are those stark differences between males and females, but there are also differences in personality and in love language. Let's talk about love languages first. If you haven't read Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, I highly recommend that you do. I want to spend some time in this discussion today telling you about his brilliant discovery that each person has a different love language, a different way in which they give and receive love. If we thought about this in terms of spoken language, it would be like your native language is English, but your spouse's native language is Chinese. If you keep telling your husband that you love him in English, 
he might not get the message since he speaks Chinese. Thankfully, you and your spouse probably, I hope, speak the same spoken language when it comes to the spoken word, but you may be speaking totally different languages when it comes to love. Chapman has identified five love languages. He calls them words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Although we all like compliments, quality time, affection, gifts, and having someone do something for us, he says that we each have a primary love language. Just as we can learn to be fluent in more than one spoken language, we may have more than one love language. But we always have our native language, the one that feels best to us. So my primary love language is quality time. When I discovered this, it changed my life. To me, if someone really loved me, they'd want to spend time with me. And if they didn't seem interested in spending time with me, then I assumed that they must not actually care about me. Realizing that not everyone feels this way was particularly eye-opening for me. Let's take my pretend friends, John and Cassie, for example. John's love language is acts of service and Cassie's is quality time. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how this could quickly turn into some marital distress. John, he gets up early each morning. He makes coffee for he and Cassie. He makes sure there are clean towels so she'll have one when she gets up to take her shower. He feeds the kids breakfast and then he heads off to work, putting in a full day to provide for his family. Then he comes home, he takes out the trash, he changes the oil in the car, and he mows the grass. They have a quick dinner together, which is mostly focused on the kids. He helps Cassie get the kids to bed before going over next door to help the neighbor move a piece of heavy furniture. He comes home, exhausted, and falls asleep on the couch watching TV. Cassie has felt alone all day. She missed John while he was at work, and she was hoping to get a little time together to tell him about her day. But as usual, he never sat down. She confronted him that weekend in tears, saying, I just don't feel loved. You never spend time with me. John is in shock. How can she not feel loved? I get up every morning and make sure that she has everything that she needs. I help with the kids. I do so much around the house and I work my butt off to provide for us. Why would she ever think that I don't love her? Always, always be learning about each other and striving to be the best spouse you can possibly be. Remember, if you neglect that fire, it will burn itself out. Lastly, one of the keys to keeping the fire burning is to have fun together, regularly. When you're having fun, you laugh, and laughter is good for your mind, your body, your spirit, and your relationship. They say laughter is the best medicine, and it turns out there's some truth to that. It reduces inflammation and stress hormones, improves circulation, and enhances the immune system. In addition to being good for your health, it also helps your relationship. It turns out that laughing swaps the stress hormone cortisol in our bloodstream with dopamine, oxytocin, and endorphins instead. Milton Berle said laughing is an instant vacation, and he was right. The hormone released when you're stressed and when you're in the fight or flight mode called cortisol, when you laugh, it actually gets swapped out for oxytocin, which is called the empathy hormone and creates bonds between two people, the same hormone that is released when a mother is breastfeeding her child to bond her and the baby together, also gets swapped out for dopamine, which is associated with the feelings of pleasure and happiness, and endorphins, which produce feelings of pleasure as well. If your marriage is hurting, if your bond is weak, you need to have fun together and laugh together. Victor Borga, who my grandpa used to love to watch, said, laughter is the closest distance between two people. I love that. Need to get closer? Then laugh together. If your marriage is doing well and you want to keep that flame burning, you need laughter. If it's not doing well, you need laughter. The best way to share genuine laughter is to do fun things together 
don't take life so seriously all the time. Don't take yourself so seriously. Don't have the same interests and hobbies as your spouse. That's okay. There are plenty of ways in which you can have fun together. My hope for you is that you enjoy tending to the fire of your marriage and that the flames will grow bigger and stronger as the years go by. To learn more about tending the fire of your marriage, visit me at firstclassmarriage.com. And if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe so that more people can see this valuable content.